entirely. All right, everybody, this is Sheets, and we have Michael, brave Jayhawk Jensen here for week one of the 13 of the Survivor Pool uh, season. So what we're going to do is, same as always, we will go back and review what happened last week, and then we will talk about what's happening this week. Uh, for those of you that are still in, that's great. For those of you who are out and still watching this, now that's a real dedication to learning. Um, the I almost had a... I shouldn't say almost. I almost had a special. Let me just check my Twitter, my Twitter, and make sure that the person did not message me that they were coming on. No, maybe next time. Um, in any case, um, so uh, for those of you, just to recap again, I busted out of my last one uh, a couple of weeks ago. I took down something week eight. Um, then and so we've been for the last like several weeks following the progress of not only Mike, uh, who's still in something pretty big. But also, listen, props to everybody that's been participating in the Discord channel on TrueDFS, uh, really, really doing a good job of, of learning and, and sharing information and sharing thoughts and things like that. So last week, um, I just, uh, again, I didn't play. Um, I have an idea of what happened. I imagine that most people took Miami. Um, and But I imagine that there are probably some <clears throat> that faded them in Circa because of Christmas and stuff like that. But in any case, I'll just turn it over to, to Mike while I go ahead and pull up his grid, which I will find somewhere. So Mike, how did you do last week? What did you end up doing with your second entry? I know you mentioned something that you were going to play. Definitely won Miami and won something else. What did you yep. end up doing? Uh, so we decided, uh, I mean, we had to make the decision early because Buffalo was the first game up um, on Thursday. And we decided to lay off that one. Just save Buffalo later. If we were able to get through, which we did, um, having the Buffalo-Dallas combo would be very, very strong. We were actually not the only person with that combo remaining. There's one other person out of 16 that also has Buffalo and Dallas. So props to them as well. Um, we got very lucky. Um, we were going to drop from Buffalo down to – Washington, Seattle, or the Jets when we spoke last week. And as soon as the podcast ended, um, let me see, like Justin Fields was ruled out pretty much. Uh, the Jets changed quarterbacks. Uh, the spread jumped to six, and then it closed at seven, seven and a half. So the decision was very easy for us to make. Um, we were going to take the Jets anyway, even if it stayed at three and a half or four. Uh, so we got the benefit of the added uh, win percentage value with those, with the injury and the, uh, the, the QB change. I don't know if that helped or not, but uh, we went with the jets. Uh, we got through Miami one by a million. Um, most people took Miami, the breakdown in my pool, there's uh, 16 remaining. One person took Dallas. Three people took San Francisco two people took the Jets. One of those Jets pickers dropped from San Francisco, which was a very good pick on their part to uh, save San Francisco for later. There's only two people in San Francisco left. So that was a very good decision by, by that opponent. Um, so we're through one Miami, one, uh, one New York Jets, and we have a very strong um, – opportunity here the next three weeks that we're really excited for but one thing I wanted to mention first um, is I wanted to bring up our strategy from several weeks ago I, I, where, found, I, found, I found your uh, thank perfect perfect so I, um, in this look here we put we're the for the top one and we're also the second and the third but the second and the third is the same entry it's it, it's a look at two different paths for the same so wait entry. so so um, again for those of you that are just come, people that are coming in just remind everybody how many this started with what are the rules what what's what, what are we looking at here uh we started with a shy over 1100 uh players we're down to 16 it's it's more or less a standard single pick league uh pool but if there's more than one person left at the remainder of the season, it goes into the playoffs. We're not even thinking about that. Um, this pool, it gets chopped usually. Um, or the, I think there's going to be the opportunity to chop for sure this year because of 
what the end of the season looks like. A lot of people are going to have pretty much the same teams, more or less, in a couple of different weeks. But if it does go to the playoffs, if you used a team during the regular season, you can use them once in the playoffs. If you did not use them during the regular season, you can pick them twice. So basically, if you do not pick Buffalo during the regular season, you can pick them two times in the playoffs. And that's the advantage of saving uh, you know, in, that, in that case. Um, but several weeks ago, um, I, it was the week where New England lost on Monday night football. To Chicago. We went, we went yeah, against Chicago. We went Miami and Las Vegas that week. Um, a lot of people took New England that week because they were looking to save Miami for week 12. Uh, at the time, the, sp- the projected spread was around nine, I believe. Um, our strategy that week was we thought a lot of people would be taking New England. So we were just hoping for the best. But we also took it because we, we knew we didn't want to take two Miami anyway in week 12. So that's why we took Las Vegas and uh, Miami several weeks ago. So that that's what left us without Miami available here. And and part of it was hopes that, you know, you don't root for players to get injured, but at the time, you know, two had a pretty rough start to the season and and it seemed like there was definitely the, you know, the, the, the chance that we would get to week 12 and Tua wouldn't be there, which would make Miami not as necessary to have for week 12. That uh, We were wrong on that part, but we had to take somebody. So we got here with one Miami, which which we were hoping for, and we had to go a different direction. Um, we decided for the drop now and save the stronger teams for later strategy by not taking uh, Dallas or Buffalo. And since it worked out, now we have a very strong uh, three-week uh, stretch coming up. So let's let's talk about this coming week. And there's two things I want to do. I'm gonna I have Survivor Grid up here, and uh, obviously at this point, it's it's really just about who you have left and who the other people in your pool have left. But I want to go through the plays here, and there's another pool I want to kind of bring up um, in, in a minute, uh, just to give you an idea of like what a, you know what what other pools could look like and, and other things to think about. So, I mean, just sorting, I guess, by – don't even need to sort by EV. We can even start, sort by winning percentage at this point, right? So 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 you have Dallas, who is the highest projected uh, chance to win. And, you know, as, as, as Mike kind of alluded to, you know, they, they have quite a bit of value in, in week 14, to say the least. You know, like they, they, they have – like five points plus of value over the next, over the next team. So if you can get away with not playing Dallas, that's great. But again, th- it does come down to who else you have left, right? Uh, who else you can play, yeah. you know, because, because then you, if you have Baltimore left somehow, you know, look, if you have both Dallas and Baltimore left, that's, that's, that's pretty big. You know, you could, then it's a question of how greedy do you want to be? I mean, you want to try to push Dallas out to 14 and save Baltimore? I mean, I, I depends. That's pretty sec- that, that'd be pretty sexy. I'm not I'm not in that position, but yeah, uh, it, 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 it just it just depends. And now I want to discuss Seattle for a second. There's Seattle and Cleveland, because and, and we'll maybe you can chime in for a for a couple of minutes. I, I bring up Seattle for a reason. You know, when we talk about about uh, fundamentals of how to play survivor pool stuff. You know, we, we say that it's always kind of a balance between it's a constant fight between EV and future value, you know, and, and whether it's better, you know, there's no better, right. When what weighs more like playing the good EV play or playing the team with the lowest future value. And what we said all the way from the beginning was that w- when you're mapping and you're planning for future value, it's really important to realize that the further out, you have to project the, the the more variance that projection has, the more fragile that projection has. So it's always important to, to keep that in mind. Um, and, and Seattle is literally a perfect example. We must have spent about a full month, the beginning of the season, discussing why it was critical to save the Rams for week 13. You know, that's my the Rams note. Yeah, are that's my be, note right here. The Rams are going to be a nine point favorite over Seattle yeah. in week 13. And there was literally nobody else to play, right? There was either going to be the Rams and then maybe drop to Minnesota and that's it. You know, 
And but you know yeah. what? I mean, this is this is the NFL, and as they say, the kids say shit happens, you know, and 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 shit happens. Another way of saying that is the further out time goes, you know, the the more variance those predictions have. So and and now right. it's all flip flopped, and now like people are like, wow, now Seattle's like the third most most favored team, and now we're in a situation where now it's a question of what do you do with Seattle? You know, everybody's gonna have the ball, but now Seattle's incredible. that team. Like Seattle was originally beginning of the season. I'm like, okay, who are we all playing against Seattle every week? You know, now it's like who are we playing against see who we played Seattle on. So it's it's kind of interesting. Now and, and the Cleveland thing I brought up because we were, I mean, we were thinking about this Cleveland thing all year long, you know, because we yeah. had this all planned out that Cleveland was gonna have Deshaun Watson back by week 13, and they were always gonna be considered a team that that nobody had that everybody had available that was going to be very popular in week 13. And that part has come to fruition. You know what I mean? Like yeah, that, it has. That, that even, we, even, I mean, Eric, even more so. I mean, no. the magnitude of which they're going to be played this week in some pools is going to be you know, quite large. Right. So why don't you talk about, I, I guess, I guess those four teams, I don't know who else we can talk mm -hmm. about, but why don't you talk about those four teams, like in general, as far as mapping goes, yeah. and how it applies to what you want, what you're going to do. I, I do want to start with the Rams Seattle discussion we had earlier in the year. It, it is quite fascinating. I, um, because I, I was thinking about this earlier in the week, and it's it's completely flipped on a dime. I mean, it, it's the exact opposite, a complete one eighty from what we were talking about earlier. And it's funny how it works out that way. In in week six, um, I was I was in Palm um, Palm Springs for a wedding, and. There were a lot of upsets that uh, that week. I did not really watch the games, but I was monitoring on my phone when I had cell service. And I had doubles that week in one pool. And I decided to unload the clip on uh, the, the Rams, the Chargers, Arizona, I think were the only three teams I took. And it was an absolute bloodbath. Over 90% of the people got knocked out. And when I made that decision, it was against what my strategy was even a couple weeks before. I wanted to have the Rams for 13. But when I got to week six, I felt it was more important to fade save these other teams. And I ended up landing on the Rams. And now I'm out of, I'm out of that pool, but it would have worked out incredibly well if I got here because here we are in week 13, and the Rams are a seven-and-a-half-point home underdog where <laughs> – at one point, they were a nine or ten point favor. That I mean, that is that that really is quite something. Mm -hmm. um, and like you said, Seattle. If we're to chop the season right here, going looking forward, Seattle is almost as valuable as I would say Baltimore was. I yeah. think it's a good comparison at the beginning of the season that my partner and I discussed. Where, yet you know, you just don't really need Baltimore for a while but it looks like you really, really need them in 11, 16, or 17. And that's where you are with Seattle. I, you know, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18. Yep. I, mean, I mean, it's incredible. Like, Seattle is the yep. most important team going forward yep. um, for most people. So, and everybody has them. No one has played Seattle. Um, unless it's uh, unless they, you know, for some reason took them in week one to just get them out of the way, hope to get lucky or something, or or, or in a weird double situation. Um, I I I've been looking at this through the lens of having two entries, so I'm gonna have a I have a, it, it's very different than looking at through the lens of oh, what if I have one entry left in in this pool on the screen right now with 16 people left because. These are what I think is a very strong, uh, very accurate projection of what the picks are going to be like this week. There's going to be a lot of Cleveland. Yep. And the reason there's going to be a lot of Cleveland is I have to assume my opponents are going to at least look one week ahead. Yeah. And they're going to see that they're going to need Seattle next yep. week. Yeah. And uh, it, you know, so if you're deciding between, and there's big drop-offs after these teams, I, I I actually don't know because I thought so much about having two entries. We haven't really thought about what we'd do if we had one. Um, so funny. It, 
because it, it, it's very it, it is very very different i mean my my picks a few weeks ago we had three entries in this pool out of 24 and we went we did we went chalk back to back to back weeks because we had three entries left and you know we it didn't seem like it made much sense to drop give up all that win percentage when we can just be more or less with the group make up equity off the people that were forced to drop or chose to drop. And if there was a big upset, hopefully it was at least on the one that the most people picked. But I don't know what people are going to drop to this week because Minnesota is a team that, you know, you'd, you'd really like to have for 15 uh, specifically, um, but also 16 if you want to differentiate from all the Tennessee picks that will be made that week. No, nah, um, nobody, nobody, nobody's dropping in this pool here. I mean, you know, you're, you're no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking in general. No, well, we'll, we'll get to that. Pool, this pool is, this is what the picks. This is what the picks are going to be. I, yeah. I, I mean, I would be very, very surprised if anybody went outside of Cleveland, Seattle. I, I think we'll be the only ones that take Dallas. Um, if somebody else takes Dallas, um, I think of that as a bonus. Um, and I look, and we've been looking at this as a two-game slate here, a two-week slate. Because next week, if you don't, again, what you're looking at here, if you, if they have Buffalo or Dallas, it's listed. Yep. Um, I think it's color coded. I figured. I figured. After, after that, the biggest favorite is Seattle. Yep. And then San Francisco, and only two people have San Francisco, and one of them has Dallas. So. There's not going to be very many teams taken in week 14 either. Um, and, and, and I think this is going to really apply to most pools. So I don't if, – if you have to take – if you don't have Baltimore, and like you said, there's a lot of merit to like saving them still at this point. It forces you into two directions if you save Baltimore, eating the chalk, with Cleveland or Seattle or dropping. And, and and when you're dropping, you're dropping quite low. I mean, what are you dropping to? Like, Minis- I guess Minnesota, right? Or Washington. These Washington. other teams you just can't take. I mean, you, you cannot take Tampa Bay. I mean, it, it, I, I, you could play. You get to week you 17. Could, you could play, you could play Green Bay. Bay. You, could, you could play Green Bay, but Green Bay is going to be a 10-point favorite probably in week 15. Uh, the, the Rams – the Rams have set yeah, their but, stars. Yeah, but, but if, you had, if, you had, if you had Kansas City available, you you would have them for fifteen. That's true, but but if if I, if I have Green Bay, at least in, in our pool, only five people have Green Bay. I think Green Bay is oh, okay. pretty sparsely available in in the average pool. I know in Circa that was a that was a that was a top spot for us. Not many people have them in Circa uh, have them in Circa either. Um, I, I would if I have Green Bay, I'd personally play Green Bay in fifteen and push. Uh, Kansas City out to 16 but I, I really feel like you almost have to just if, if you're choosing between Seattle and Cleveland I would take Seattle and then take your shot next week by dropping um, most people are going to go Cleveland this week Seattle next week if they have both those teams um, if they don't they're probably just going to take whichever one they have um, but there's really not a there's no the drops next week are Las Vegas, and I put that on the spreadsheet. They're a five-point favorite. They're also playing at the Rams. I mean, depending on how bad the Rams look this week, I mean, that, that, no, that spread could easily let, get let the me, same let me, let me play devil's advocate. So these two guys that you have um, uh, entries, uh, looks like – oh, that's you, the one th- three down. Okay. The, the, the one underneath that, uh, the Cleveland, Dallas, Minnesota, that one, why do you think they're going to play Minnesota instead of Green? No, that's that's myself. So oh. we have two we have two paths. Um, but which I one? like one of them, and my Wait. partner oh, likes oh, the, oh, the other okay. one. So you have three you have three entries. This is one on the top, the Seattle one, and then you're yeah, between we're, these we're two. A hun- we're a hundred percent going Seattle in, the, in that first one, and, and you're between and these two ideas over here. Okay, that correct. Okay. I, I like one. Jesse likes the other. I think that they're pretty. They're pretty interchangeable, I think. Um, well, hold on. Which one do you think? Which one do you think I like? I I, I agree. I think they're pretty similar in in, in their own ways. Um, there's oh. strengths and weaknesses to each one. One, you're eating the chalk by taking Cleveland. 
but you get to save Buffalo past week fourteen. I, I would, I would, I would, I would, I would take Dallas now. I, I, I would, I would try to fade Cleveland at all costs. Um, okay, that, uh, that's the one Jesse likes. I, I like the Cleveland one. I mean, I'm not going to end up. Yeah, caring. for me, I mean, for just, me, you, you're going to give me ten to one odds. I'm going to take it. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And that's just the way it's going to be. Um, uh, I mean, you don't you don't get that too often. Uh, so no, uh, th- th- we might get lucky and go get and get it next week too. Not not to not to the extreme because right. there people are going to have Buffalo and Dallas available. W- one other thing that I'm lo- that we've been looking at is uh, this guy with Kansas City left. There's and this and this goes along with Jesse's strategy. One person has Kansas City left. I see that. We don't want that person in there. We no want kidding. that person no out. No kidding. <laughs> and uh, you know, the best way to get him out is to not pick the teams that yeah, he is I taking agree. the next two weeks. So if we get to 15, he could be out and we can have two entries. I agree. And he's probably going to go, He, you know, he has, he also has Las Vegas. So he's probably hope, you know, if we knew he, if I knew he was going Cleveland, then I would, I would not, I would never take Cleveland because I think that like, to me, it puts it over the top. I want two chances to knock this guy out. Um, and the Cleveland Seattle, well, I guess, I guess the problem though, is if we go Dallas, then we would be taking Seattle ourselves in week 14. Um, you know, if we, if we went, uh, no, I guess we could go Dallas Buffalo. We, we could go Dallas Buffalo or Dallas Seattle, but, yeah. um, this is like the, 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 the heads up I, match I, within if it the were me, I would, I would go Dallas Buffalo, but, 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 but like I said, Cleveland Dallas certainly, certainly makes sense. They're both, listen, as, as my partner would like to say with Buffalo and Dallas next week, they're both winning. You know I mean? I'm not too worried about that. Well, th- there's pretty big differences. I mean, Dallas is a 14 and a half point favorite and, sure. and Buffalo is only nine and a half. Oh, so, I didn't realize Buffalo's down. Yeah. Uh, the, the lines came out yesterday in DraftKings. When I saw that, I'm like, wow, we should go double Dallas. And, and, and Jesse said, yeah, we should. I mean, that's, I mean, that's incredible. That's a, 10 to 14 is a yeah, huge a difference. So it, we're approaching like you know, 90% territory. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe you are supposed to take Cleveland this week. That's interesting. I didn't realize it was such a big dis- discrepancy. Now I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, no, we never would have done that. But uh, it's uh, – there are – but, you know, it, it goes both ways. We're, we're splitting hairs. We're in a great spot. Um, you know, we're not in the spot where we have to take one of these other teams. Um, and there's nothing wrong with taking these other teams. But we have to have – we have to at least discuss the strategy of, well, okay, Mike, you're being a jerk. I don't have Dallas or Buffalo or Baltimore. Who the fuck should I take? Okay. Um, well, I mean, I, I I think you should take Seattle. I, I think Seattle yeah. is the better is the is the superior pick of the two. Yeah. Because even if you if even if you don't have Las Vegas to drop to in fourteen, there's going to be so many Seattle Las Vegas picks in fourteen. It's okay to drop to whoever the next one is. I mean, you're, you're not going to, you know, it's not going to feel good. It's not going to, you know, you're not going to be very excited to watch the game. But, you know, if you have Cincinnati, Tennessee's a tough one because of week 16. You know, D- D- uh, Detroit, um, they're a three-point favorite. Uh, there, there's some options. I would rather drop next week than this week because, and I'm looking at my pool specifically, but I feel this is going to be, you know, the case in many pools, there's just going to be a lot more Cleveland picks than there are Seattle. And so, you got it. I, I'd, I'd rather hope Cleveland loses this week and wipes out um, a, a huge group of people. I mean, on Survivor Grid, it has it at 40 and 20%. Uh, Who Seattle knows? is 100% available. Cleveland is not. Um, that, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty big discrepancy. So, so I, I want to go over another pool here, and when you get to Christmas, maybe we'll we'll talk, we'll we'll pull some, we'll pull Circa up just to have some fun. So yeah. I'm going to pull up. This is a pool I've, I've alluded to a bunch, and I've been out of this since week one. But this is the the Gregorich pool. Um, yeah, and this is the one that I gave that that example of Madisau basically two weeks in a row having like yeah. extreme leverage that he just got really unlucky with, you know, whatever. Yeah, I actually that was I was hoping, you know, I, I did a. I did like an hour and forty five minute podcast yesterday on like on like pre Black Friday poker with the with Matt Berkey and the South for Y crew. I had so much freaking fun just talking about. I all heard that. about that. I, I, I oh, saw that. Was so this much fun. I mean, every once in a while, I love I love reliving all that. It was you know if anybody that oh the story oh the stories are the best. 
Anybody that played poker back then, I really encourage you to watch. Um, and and so I was in that kind of that poker mo mood. So I reached out to Manasau to see if he could come, if he wanted to come on here and talk about this um, and talk about his 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 entries and. He wants to whine about circuit. He could do that too. He didn't respond. I, I haven't spoken to him. Oh, I'd love to hear him whine. And, uh, that'd be, that'd yeah. be fantastic. Yeah. So we'll so we'll just we'll just see maybe if he gets through. We'll we'll do it next week. So like here's kind of a good example. I didn't really go into to depth, but these are kind of like chess puzzles that you know, like even like if you're out, you kind of want to try to figure out how to solve. You know. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So like this for, for everybody who wants to take a shot at this. This one is you know a pool that had that had a bunch of people in it. You know, over two hundred, one hundred seventy seven people, down to four, and then you know, listen, this is usually a pretty sharp pool. And then, like, you, I mean, I'm looking at, I'm looking at this, and I was pretending like if I was Manasau, like for example, like what I would do this week, and and you know, it's it's everybody's here has the same kind of decisions, you know, everybody's got Seattle and 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 Cleveland to kind of choose from, and then in this pool, like only one guy, it looks like, no, got Texans and Roar both have Dallas available, like they're the only ones, and and nobody has Buffalo available, so those two guys could save like Seattle. You know what I mean? Um, because they can use Dallas in 14. Well, I'm saying, what I'm saying is they could use, uh, they could use Seattle now is what I'm saying. Like these guys like Madison and, and not splitting. I think they have to use Cleveland, right? Cause they have no option in 14 other than Seattle. So I imagine that both these guys are going to take Cleveland. And if you're go Texans and your roar, like if you know that those two are both taking Cleveland and you have Dallas that you can drop on people, I presume that neither of them are going to take Cleveland. And then I guess they're both going to end up taking Seattle. Is that, I don't know. I just looked at this for the first time today. Like everybody's entry. I, I, I'm plugging in the teams. I plugged the wrong, wrong ones in first. I need to visualize it. Um, one, I'm sharing the screen. Two. You can't, you can't, I can't, you can't see this. No, I need to put it on the, uh, Oh, on Survivor Grid. I like to, I like to cross out the teams. Okay, yeah, I, mean, I got I'm just it. Trying to get through. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm looking. So how, how many how many how many people have Cleveland? Uh, everybody's got Cleveland available. Everybody's got Seattle available. But oh, what's wow. what's interesting is one guy. Wow, Mike has three. Oh no, he got rid of KC. So nobody's got like the, the nut KC Matt. Nut KC. Nobody's got the nut Buffalo. Not nut Buffalo, but you got two people like. Like one in full, like like Go Texans and Aurora have Dallas, and that's it. The other two, Mike Mattis, Mattisau and not splitting, do not have Dallas. So my point is, is that Mattisau and not splitting, I imagine they both have to play Seattle in fourteen, and and as a result, they have to play Cleveland in twelve, and then like knowing that thirteen, but yeah, mm -hmm. sorry about that. Yeah, and and knowing that. Texans and Roar, they can save Dallas for 14. So they get to push. So in a weird way, so they could push Seattle back. But if they do that, they're kind of giving up EV, right? Because if they know that Madison and not splitting are both taking Cleveland, like you don't want to take Cleveland if you're to go Texans or where you'd rather take Seattle. But then on the other hand, you kind of want to save Seattle, you know, past week yeah. 14. So I don't know. It's kind of a weird GTO decision, you know. Like what? What do you do if you're if you're if you're either go Texans or Roar? Do you do you do you save Seattle at the expense of EV this week, or do you or do you play Seattle at the expense of a future value later? I I would, I think you should pick the team that is most likely that everyone's going to take, um, if you have Dallas next week, because uh, you're not giving up very much win percentage. And, you know, if, if it loses, then you just all tie. Um, right. Yeah, good. it stinks when it goes 3-1, but, like, the the, the, uh, the chance to go be 4-0 and just be free-rolling the game in a way is, is advantageous. Um, I looked at it really quick. It looks like one person has Minnesota left. Week 15 for Madison is, is really thin. Um so there's no opportunities like, you know, save a team for there. I, I was hoping that everybody had Minnesota left, but that's not the case. Only not. If that were the, yeah, if it, if it was the case, like everybody had Minnesota, I would, if I were mad, so I would just, I, I mean, you just take the absolute shock to get to 15 and hope everybody, you know, two or three people take Minnesota. And then you, cause you have to drop anyway. 
um, his strategy in 15 is going to be taking a unique team. Yeah. Um, and there's going to be three or, you know, three, four, five to choose from. Yeah. Um, man, I, his pick is so obvious. Right. That, That's what I'm saying. It's so obvious. Well, both, both two end. Well, what about not splitting? So not splitting has Minnesota available to 15. So he's a, he's a little different than Mattisau in that regard. Um, that, that person I would, I would be taking the most likely case to get there, the best chance to get there. Because that's going to be your be- that's going to be their best chance to win. I, does anybody have Kansas City? No. Nope. And no, and does anyone have Philadelphia? Um, nope. Okay, so that 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 person I would th- that person should take the the most likely path to get to fifteen, and then I'd work if I, if I were Madison, I'd work off of that because they might not be aware of that, but they should that. They well, have so, the so, that, so what that means then, so what that means, so, so not so not splitting, again, they don't have Dallas available in 14, so they have to take Seattle. So they have to take Cleveland now. They're going to take Cleveland, like right. I'm saying. They have to take Cleveland, then Seattle. So they get Cleveland, Seattle, Minnesota, where the guy, um, Mattisau, for example, he's going to have to go Cleveland, Seattle, something else, right? Yeah, um, correct. What else is there in fifteen except for, except it's for all Minnesota. the same. I mean, it's all the same. It's New Orleans, okay. Denver, Chargers, Washington, the Jets. I mean, the, okay. several several so it's all, so mediocre it's, choices. So, so yeah, so so not splitting is basically forced into what he probably wants to do anyway, right? So not splitting yeah. is going to play the obvious teams, Cleveland and Seattle, because he really has no other choice. And as a result of that, he's gonna have he's gonna be in a really really nice spot in fifteen, you know, because he's gonna have Minnesota against nobody else having Minnesota. Um, so that's that. And then so and again, so I guess we're gonna see Madison. We're gonna predict predict this. Madison will have Cleveland. Not splitting will have Cleveland. Roar. Now it's again. I'm I'm really torn between what these first two guys, these other guys, are gonna do. Like they could do and the these, same thing. and these and these guys both have Dallas. Yes, and they so, both have Cleveland available. Right, so but they, they should both have Seattle have available. So it's, both, same, yeah. so it's the same. So it's the same. Who's who's more likely to win, Cleveland or Seattle? Um, Seattle slightly. I, I mean, I, I would take Cleveland if I, if I know the other two people are taking Cleveland. Right. I'm taking Cleveland. I I, I just I, I think it's too much of a risk. You don't want to, um, yeah. You 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 would prefer to now now again, but then 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 we get into poker, right? So if you're rolling, there, and there's really you they don't you don't even need a clue here. If you know your your opponent is a thinking player, yeah, you should know that the other person is going to take Cleveland as well. I mean, I'm, well, I'm pretty sure that's the right logic. How, however, <laughs> however, the way GTO works, if I'm go Texans and right, and I think that's what what Roar is thinking, I'm just going to take Seattle then and take my three to one odds this week. <laughs> That's true, but you, but th- that that's true, but if the person thinks the same thing, right? It's then fine. it's a two then it's a two two split, and no. I mean, I, so I guess it's like that that awful stupid game on Game Show Network where like no. friend or foe, right. Um, right? I mean, where you're always supposed to be you're always supposed to be foe, so it's not the best analogy. Yeah, but here you don't want to be on three one, but I mean. If the money's important, you. I mean, I. I it's not just the money. I, 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 Jesse and I took our kids to the Union Station yesterday, and we're talking about like God. I would just, we're just sorry. He said, "I might never want to do this again if we don't win this year because we played so well. We right. got lucky a couple times, in the right spots. We had these unbelievable, unique picks. It'd just be a tragedy not to like, w- you know, win some, you know, win something at this point. Like, you know, psychologically speaking, I." I think if both players are thinking, I think they're going to go Cleveland. I, I just – because you have to think the other person's going to do it. And w- why try to get fancy and hope to be the only one on it when right. – if the other person feels the same way, it's a 2-2 split. And then it would be hilarious if, you know, Seattle yeah. ended up losing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I don't all know. right. So, when, so, when you have a huge uh, – when you have a huge spot like that, I think you should take – generally you should take the, the easiest path yeah. to get there. But yeah. here, because Seattle's – slightly the bigger favorite but the other two are definitely yeah. taking cleveland yeah i think it, it, it changes 
All right. Any well, I want to bring, I want to bring up one more comment. Um, yep. I, I sent a message to you. I, I am shocked how few people took Miami and circuit this week. I, I, I'm curious what your thoughts are on that. I, it absolutely blew my mind. Uh, you know, they, they play on the Christmas slate, but they were also 14, 14 half point favorites. And yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm playing under the assumption that if I'm in that pool, it's going to Christmas, but I never would have not taken Miami if I was still in ever. Um, I mean, how, outside how, of telling me I'd be the only one in Miami many, left. How, wait, how many had them available? No, it says it right there, 53. 35 out of 53 had them available. I mean, that's incredible. So, I mean, so, but what, I what, I, what I want to know, well, I, I really don't want to research this right now, but, uh, but of the people that had Miami available and didn't take, you know what I mean? Like, did those people take the Jets or did those people take the Niners? You know what I mean? Like, well, like they're only supposed to take the Jets or the Commanders. I mean, the Chiefs is a, is a terrible pick for anybody this week. You never should have done that. Right. In this pool. There's too many people left. But right. drop uh, dropping the Niners makes not as worse sense as taking the Chiefs. But the Niners are like the best pick in 16, um, right. or one of the best pick uh, outside of Tennessee. The and and the Niners are the best pick in 18. So like. There's no reason to ever drop the Miami, the Niners, but obviously, I I doubt they all dropped the Jets. Um, I, I I you could have told me there would be three people left with Miami, and I still would have taken Miami. I I, I can't believe eighteen people didn't take them. I um not just yeah, because it's I just uncertain. Can't, I just, I just what can't read this too well from here, but I I, I find the the entries, but I I don't have patience. Um, but but this is, I, I, I just thought that number would have been astronomical. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty shocked because Miami only has two plays the rest of the year, really. And it's it's Christmas against Green Bay. And that was contingent on Green Bay seasons being done. And, yeah. you know, you, you could assume they would have lost to, to Philly, you know, going into the week. But, you know, outside of that, Miami's next best play is week 18. And they might not be playing for anything. So if you didn't take Miami this week, you're looking at playing at uh, a 20 pick le- uh, pool for the whole season and never taking Miami, which seems very odd when you're looking at them being a 14 point favorite at, uh, you know, the inflection point of the tournament going forward at, you know, at, at week, tw- week 12, right after Thanksgiving. Uh, I was pretty surprised by that, but it, I, I think it speaks to the, you know, the sharpness or the, or the gamble that, you know, people are willing to, you know, you know, go for it. And I, and I do, and I do respect that, but I, I was, I was quite surprised. I mean, it's definitely the pure play, right? I mean, you know, the, the pure the pure play is is to fade where everybody's taking in the name of future value. You know, it's uh, it's I don't know if I w- would have been able to do it, um, but um, I, I I get it. I, I mean, I definitely get it. Um, all right, so I know I'm going to be rooting at least for um, one Seattle for you. And, uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna let Jesse decide. I really don't care. I I, I mean, we're gonna talk about it again because it's fun to discuss. I mean, part of it is, you know, there's the strategy talk. It's the, the stimulation is fun to you know, talk about the strategy. Um, so I'm gonna push for my side a little bit because my side is the right side if, you know, the season keeps going and you need Buffalo much later, you right. know, or if it goes to the playoffs and you know you go to week 18 and we still haven't used Buffalo and but. We, we could take somebody else and save them for the playoffs twice as a one or two seed. But there's other routes where, you know, it works out to where taking Dallas is, is, is the better play. It's just a lot of guesswork that we talked about earlier with, you know, the, the Rams Seattle. I mean, let's close where we started. The whole season was talking at the beginning was talking about, you know, the Rams Seattle, you know, do you want to, you know, do you want to save them for there? And in the end, the, the point spread flopped about 17 points. And now uh, Seattle's going to be a pretty heavily picked team this week. All right. Well, good luck, man. And uh, thank you. I will. What, what's next week is Wednesday. I will be back. I'm going away for a few days, but I'll be back in time for Wednesday. Uh, good luck. And maybe we'll get Madison on this week if he survives. That'd be fantastic. All right. Talk to you next week.